guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody and i'm going to be giving you okay so welcome everybody in tonight's class and tonight's class we're going to be talking about the blood supply of the pelvis which is uh, confusing um difficult to remember and i'll try to make it very very easy and simple for you logical and a lot more fun than what it is you know reading from the book now the thing that you all like the most the questions which come from anatomy and why i have included in the last lectures because i think i've included every part of it in my anatomy lectures up till now so anatomy of pelvic ureter the, the relationship of ureter the possible sites of injury the the way in, this, in which the injuries can be prevented it's not only there in my answer bank it's also profusely given in the lecture that i took on ureter and bladder the next about major blood vessels supplying the pelvis i'm going to be taking it uh, uh, right now this question has been recently asked in uh, october i'm sorry maybe uh, yeah october or uh, the the session right before that this question has been asked about the arterial supply which is very very important that makes it even more important because it's a recent question clinical significance of the collateral solution obviously circulation of the pelvis with emphasis on internal iliac artery ligation enumerate the complications of internal iliac artery ligation which we are uh, going to be covering all these aspects and we've already covered most of these retroperitoneal spaces boundaries i think i've spoken enough regarding the pelvis and its relationships i spoke about the deep perineal pouch superficial perineal pouch issue rectal fossa anatomy of anterior abdominal wall ureteric injuries uterosacral ligament all these things especially see ureter has come so many times right and then of course the anterior posterior division of internal iliac we're going to be talking about in tonight's class and the indications of internal iliac ligation we have covered it and we're going to be covering it in the uh, lecture on pph right so the surgical uh, procedures of uh, controlling pph we have talked about internal iliac artery ligation correct and obviously the complications and everything is there then uh, see how many times pelvic ureter has come that is the reason why in, in surgical anatomy of urinary bladder prevent urinary bladder injury rectify the injury and then the lymphatic drainage so we've spoken in uh, detail there was a class that i took on just lymphatic drainage alone so i think by now i've included and finished most of the part of anatomy lectures and tonight is the last class on anatomy and we're going to be talking about the blood supply of the pelvis so watch out close it's very very simple very easy and make it a lot of fun for you people so that you remember it and you're able to produce it properly in the exam without having to you know go through a lot of mugging <clears throat> the anatomy and especially the anatomy that you have to remember it's not very difficult and if you just go through the lectures that i have given you once you'll be so well oriented with these spaces which i used to find very difficult to remember and tonight the second most important thing which i used to find very bad you know in remembering ureter was fine bladder was okay remembering these blood vessels and their uh, you know uh, and, and nerve supplies was horrible so try to make that simple in the last lecture the nerve supply and now i have this blood supply i'm going to making a lot of fun so let's start with the first things first uh you have this as the most important slide because here you can see this is the abdominal layout it's called abdominal layout because it's finally going to supply now the abdomen and the pelvis here over at this point in time it's it divides into two right so this is at the level of l4 it divides the level of two common iliac arteries the right common iliac artery the left common iliac artery and why do we call it the common iliac artery because after that they they again branch out into two external iliac artery this one and the internal iliac artery and we are more bothered about internal iliac artery can any one of you just let me know why don't we talk about external iliac artery why do we talk about internal iliac artery all the time so in your chat boxes guys come on everybody quickly write down why are we interested in talking about the internal iliac artery why don't we talk about the external iliac artery where where do i have my favorite students where are they so i can see 15 online but i don't see any any answer coming up and nobody is even typing so come on guys quickly yes very good so it's very very fast because why why do we talk about the internal iliac artery with external iliac artery it supplies and everything externally so it supplies mostly the you know the muscles muscles of uh, the anterior abdominal wall some of them muscles in the thigh then it goes and you know continues as the femoral artery so it goes supplies mostly the external you know areas so it supplies the skin or the muscles or the joints and the ligaments and it doesn't supply the internal pelvic organs which we are mostly bothered about which is why we are concentrating on the internal iliac artery 
correct that was the thing i wanted to tell you and why don't we talk about veins so much is because most of the veins they are after the name of the arteries correct and it's the arteries which bleed the more it's the arteries which supply veins just take the blood back so that's the reason why we do not talk talk about venous supply we always talk about the arterial supply of the veins correct still if you want to really know this is the most important vein in the abdomen the inferior vena cava made from the common iliac veins both from here and right and the left common iliac veins of course coming from the internal and see the name is also after the arteries also only if you remember the arteries you automatically remember the veins so this is external iliac vein this is the internal iliac vein and look at the caliber of this you know why this is very very important this aspect this whole part is very important i'll tell you the one very important applied anatomy of this particular part why over here aorta is important definitely but equally important is inferior vena okay fine i'll give you two give me two reasons why inferior vena cava over here is very very important come on guys one reason you already know one one is obstetric reason the other one is a gynee reason can you quickly tell me okay very good very good sara can you tell me please the uh, the reason why inferior vena cava is very important one i'm sure you all will be able to tell me it's about the gravid uterus right okay all right okay that's that's okay i'll take that as well anything else inferior vena cava is i'm i'm talking about not aortic i'm not about aorta aorta is definitely very important and i'm going to be telling the entire class is about aorta and its uh, branches but why is inferior vena cava very important uh, apart from of course the gravid uterus you know kind of uh, putting pressure over it and it's decreasing to the cardiac output Mm, supine hypotension that comes kind of goes with what I'm saying already, right? Any gynae reason for why inferior vena cava is very very important? Mm, deep vein thrombosis. Um, well, we'll talk about the leg uh, veins in that matter, not about the uh, inferior cava. That's too 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 large a vein, you know, for calling it um, involved in DVT. We'll talk about the leg veins there. Anything else? Anything else, guys? So I can let me see how many more have joined in. Okay, there's still fifteen. Okay, I'll tell you what, guys. What happens is that when you're putting the first port laparoscopically, okay, when you put the first port in, especially in thin individuals, it sometimes you hit the external iliac artery. Mostly, if you do not hit that, you hit the the vein, the external iliac vein. or the internal iliac vein if you go a little more lateral rather than just screwing it absolutely in middle sometimes your hand goes like this and the right handed people they usually go like this in the abdomen right can you see it like this in the abdomen so if you're going like this they go like a little bit like this so this is where you hit mostly the one of the branches that form the external iliac vein or the internal iliac vein of which which join to form the inferior vena cava that is the common iliac vein sometimes you directly hit the common iliac vein also okay because uh, superficial uh, is actually the aorta that's true and uh, right common iliac artery is very very easily hit more than that external iliac artery is is hit but sometimes even this uh, external iliac vein can also be hit all right so this is a very important um, applied anatomy of this particular part 